Hi you guys, I'm making a video just on arithmetic reasoning questions because I got a lot of emails last night from just that section and I do want a um, math knowledge just to even it out just in case somebody will ask me about that but um, I'm sorry if I sound like I'm like just waking up or if I'm looking like I'm just woken up but I actually really did, I woke up early for I can um do this video because I know during the day I'm not going to have any time to do it so yeah and plus see this box right here this box right here going to be full by the time well actually packed up by the time my dad gets home and he said he's going to be back in like another 30 minutes so 30 minutes is enough time for me to do a video <clears throat> Sorry if I sound like my voice is bugged, but it's because I'm sick and I've been fighting this cold for like the last week or so. I don't know. I guess it's because the weather's changing. I don't know. I'm rambling, so I'm about to just get through to this real quick. I'm going to read the question and I'm going to show you guys. A brick layer charges $8 per square foot to lay a patio. How much would it cost for the bricklayer to lay a 12 foot by 16 foot patio? Okay, what I what I did here is another visual kind of question, like how I did in the other video with the circle with the pie. It's kind of it's like that basically. You don't have to do it the way I did it, but it's always best for me if I can always get the right answer. So I'm gonna show you the question just in case you don't know what the hell I just said. Excuse the curse word for parents, I know. I don't want nobody to be like, oh, I don't want my kids watching this because she's cursing. I'm sorry. But I just woke up. But um, what I did here, basically, is, you see this little box I drew? This formula right here is going to be length times width. Because he said, I underlined the numbers to it. Because he said, is a 12 foot by 16 foot so <clears throat> in order to find an area of the rectangle of the patio you have to multiply 12 times 16 and it equals it gets you 192 I don't know if you can see my little notes under there I'm sorry my little notes I told you under that 12 times 16 Okay, that's the first thing you want to do is find out how much how um much square foot it is, the patio is altogether. So after that, since it's eight dollars per square foot, you you um the second where it says number two, I'm sorry, where it says number two, you want you times it by eight because it's eight dollars per square foot. So one hundred and ninety two do you remember the dot in the middle means multiply? Um, 192 times 8. And then you'll get 1,536. Oh, I don't know if you've seen this. Answer. The little tab I did. But, um, yeah, that's how you do that question. That's... It's basically it's kind of easy. It's just you just know you know your um formula for rectangle and square, and that's how you will figure out that problem. It's it's not that hard. It's basically filling in, um like substituting basically. But um, yeah, just do it the way I have it right there. Twelve you multi twelve by sixteen times sixteen because. It's length times width. It'll give you the area, how much square f foot it is. And then as soon as you get the square foot, you multiply it by 8 because it's $8 per square foot. And that's the answer. Moving on. I spent a lot of time on that question. Okay. A tune-up increases a car's fuel efficiency by 5%. If a car averaged 20 miles per gallon before the tune-up, how many miles per gallon will it average after the tune-up okay I'm gonna show you the question this is a second question just for okay what I did here 
is since it's a percentage question, I don't know if you've seen my other other percentage um video, but um I took the twenty and I lined the zeros up. You see where I did made a little I lined the zeros up. You multiply it by five percent, so you have to put a zero in front of the five because the zeros have to it has to be lined up with the decimals. The decimals have to be lined up. Okay, it has everything has to be lined up because you if it's not then you will get the wrong answer. So you you multiply it and you're gonna get you see how it's lined up? Um because everything is by hand, there's no calculator. So um after that you multiply, you line it up like that, and then when you get your answer, you move your decimal two places to the left. Why do you do that? Because if you don't, you're going to get 100 and it's not going to increase. He's not going to have 120 miles to the gallon. That's like almost not even an average car. And it's 2014. Get that. So you know that would be an outrageous question. I mean, answer. So see, I said move the two places to the left. And then after that, you will get one. So when you move it two places to the left, you'll get one. And then after that, you add 20 plus 1, and it gets you 21. So she, oh, a tune, the tune-up on the car will get them 21 miles to the gallon. I don't know if I'm explaining that as clear as I did in the ASVAB percentage, but, yeah, that's basically how you do that. You just 20 times 0 0.05. You do point, put a 0 in front, in front of the 5 because you have to line it up. And you always line it up like you count the money. Like if, since it said twenty percent, I mean since it said twenty, where did we go? Dang, I should underline this too. But it said twenty miles. You see where it said twenty miles? You line it up like money. You see how I did? Like I, I would would have lined it up like it was said twenty dollars. You see how I did that? But yeah, you line it up just like that. Make sure all your decimals is lined up and then everything and make sure when you answer it you move it two places to the left I can't stress that enough if you don't you're gonna get the wrong answer and it's impossible to get 120 miles to the gallon in this in 2014 so you if you see that answer then you already know just rule it out you already know that's a lie so there goes that for that question that's all you have to do. Don't forget to add the 1 to the 20. Because it's 20%. Um, 5% out of 20 is 1. So you add the 1 to the 20. And that's 21. My next question is math knowledge. And this is really simple. But I see a lot of people... Um, mess it up. I was tutoring. I don't want to put them out, but I was tutoring somebody. It wasn't any of you guys from YouTube, but um, yeah, they were. I don't know what they were thinking, but I don't know. They didn't know how to solve this problem. And I think this problem is easy, but you know, somebody might not know. So this is what I'm here for. Clear it up. So okay, you see how it says the square root of 49 times the square root of 64 okay first you find the square root you find the square root first so the square root of 49 is 7 and then you find the square root of 64 the square root of 64 is 8 you bring the multiply sign down 7 times 8 is 56 you see that's not that hard right before you Solve that and before you solve this question, you solve you um solve the square root. Because if you don't, then I don't even know how you even solve that question without solving the square root first. Anyway, so I guess you would probably would have did like 49 times 64, which is wrong. But um sorry if I'm talking fast because I'm looking at the time and thing I'm trying to keep it under 10 minutes. So yeah. And that's pretty much it for this video. Any questions, email me, do whatever you do, leave comments. <sighs> I got 11 days left, you guys. 11 days, and it's going by really, really fast. But I'll see you guys later. Bye.